is Trudy, and I'm working on my conversations with my daughter. She's in the middle of a, um, a crisis. Um, there was an incident a couple days ago, and um, I'm realizing that some of my language with my daughter makes her feel invalidated. So um, I'm going to walk through um, this now, because I don't want to invalidate my daughter. So she is hyper-focused on and obsessing about the cell phone um, because of what it symbolizes to her. It, um, the cell phone right now, she entered into some stupid phone contract. And she's not going to be able to get out of the contract even if I can get the phone back. So this phone is, symbolizes to her as her inability to financially care for herself. Um, my mother pays her rent and utilities. She has been living off of an aid program because I put her in to a group home. I put her into the CPS system when she was 17 and a half, when she had her first um, suicide attempt. I, I wanted them to keep her at the mental hospital longer and I refused to pick her up because I knew she could handle a couple months in a group home. Um, I knew that if I, I did this, that there might be a chance that she would get services, she could get wraparound services, a social worker, you know, some help for her. That's why I did that. And so, um, <clears throat> yeah, so she's been getting this check because she got into a special program when she turned 18 um, for girls that are at risk of um, sex trafficking. So she's gotten wraparound services for three years, and then um, she was supposed to be cut off from the program when she turned 21 last year. But because of COVID, she's still kind of half in the program where she gets the money, but she doesn't get all the wraparound services. So um, she's been getting about $500 a month since last July. And that money's going to run out in a couple months is what we've been told. So she's really scared about money right now because she doesn't know how to hold down a job to make money um you know she's living in a condo by herself where she's an easy target and a victim for other people to take advantage of her because she does have a home and she doesn't want to be alone she wants somebody there with her because she doesn't know who she is and she doesn't know how to take care of herself and i don't agree with her being alone there but i don't I don't know of another, I don't know other options at this point of what to do with her. Um, so she's obsessed about this phone because in her mind it symbolizes that her, her fears about her inability to financially care for herself and that, that feel, the fear for her is very, very real. And I don't want to invalidate her by telling her just to let go of the phone. Okay. The thing is that she's, she's trying to manipulate me to contact her, the boyfriend that is over this because of this incident where there's a lot of violence and the police are telling me that my daughter was the primary aggressor, that they could have arrested her, but they didn't because of her mental illness. And she's, she keeps yelling and she's, she's so convinced that she was assaulted and that she was attacked. Some suppose that somebody robbed her of $200, um, but you know, I wasn't there, so I don't know the other side of the story of what everything that happened. And in my daughter's perspective, she is so convinced that she was the victim here, but because she got her, her stimulus money, she got a bunch of stimulus money last week when I saw her, and she was really happy because she was spending money. She was going to buy groceries, and so that was a really good day for her because she had all this money. Um, and so I know that she bought weed with her money and definitely pot could have some negative influences here. It's not the best thing for her to be doing, but that is not as a big of a concern to me as harder drugs. And, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that there was other drugs here going on here. And I'm not sure if it's, she bought something that she thought was one drug and that she got something else and she's having just a really bad trip because She's not aware of what she actually ingested. Um, and so she, you know, she could have blacked out and um, had this violent episode. I don't, I don't know. Um, but she's obviously really struggling. She's, when I talk to her, 
she's been, you know, screaming and crying for a couple days now about this phone and she's trying to manipulate me to, to go to the boyfriend to exchange this phone for some other phone. Uh, it's not like if I'm able to do that exchange would be it's just complicated and stressful. It's not like that's going to fix the problem of the, the financial crisis that she's feeling. Even if I can physically get this phone to her, that's not going to get her out of the T-Mobile contract. And she's got like three different phones, if you count all of them together. I don't understand how to help her here. Because, yeah, and so I don't want to say just drop this issue with the phone. Because I don't give a crap about this bill, like her mental health is so much more important like she can barely talk i can't understand her on the phone because she's lost her voice from yelling and screaming and crying about this phone and you know it reminds me of this financial issue for her it reminds me of something that happened between me and her a couple years ago where you know i was gonna i was trying to help her establish her credit and build some credit for herself because she's young and, you know and I haven't been the best when it comes to my own credit. I've maxed out my credit cards and I'm not perfect. Okay, so, but I did have some credit and I thought, you know, I'll make her an authorized user on one of my credit cards. And um, so she gets, we get the card in the mail with her name on it. And her perception of what this means is very different than what I know it means. This is, you know, this is my credit that I'm sharing with her. And if she uses my credit, I'm the one that's responsible to pay off. This is my card. She's just an authorized user on my account. But in her mind, she's convinced that I'm trying to steal her credit. And that, um, that I'm somehow going gonna, gonna to screw up her credit because I don't know what I'm doing with my credit cards. And now she's going to owe a bunch of money because I'm just, I'm going to screw up her credit. Okay, at the same time, she's telling me I'm stealing something from her. She's also telling me that now, because her name's on that account, that she gets the right to half of the um, available balance on that credit card. So, as she's telling me that I'm stealing from her, at the same time, she's demanding that I allow her to use... <laughs> that credit card half that credit card money and I'm like you know honey that's this is not how it works and I remember this is a couple years ago and I remember her being just so enraged and I guess that makes sense like it's she doesn't feel like she has any any value and I think she's struggling so I don't know if she's going to have the capacity to really have a job and to to financially care for herself. So that's very, very real for her and for me. And I can't just invalidate this phone. So how am I going to talk to her without invalidating her experience here? Because she's feeling incredibly powerless. And if I just say, let go of the phone... All she hears is invalidation. I don't know what else to tell her. I don't know. I guess I gotta just focus on other things. But if she's she's just gonna yell and scream and try to make me a party to having contact with the man that has the phone... I mean, yes, her name is on the contract with T-Mobile. But when they went to T-Mobile, they got the deal for a buy one, get one free. And the man that she was with at that time, he paid you know, to get those two phones. So he has an investment in that purchase. Even though, yeah, it's going to affect her credit. Yeah, it's muddled. She doesn't understand that people aren't trying to rob her and steal her, but maybe somebody did. I don't know the people that were in her home when this incident occurred. There was people that she'd never met before. 
I mean, yes, there's a possibility that she didn't do anything but smoke pot. And maybe one of these people gave her something that she didn't even know about. Who knows? Um, so she's acting her behavior so erratic and so crazy. I just, I would like to get her to a doctor to make sure she's okay. But I'm, I'm not willing to force medical intervention at this time because I just feel that it's going to further traumatize her. And it, it may not help at all. It may not help at all. So, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to try to interact with her and just not feed into the drama about the phone because it symbolizes this great struggle for her and I really don't want to invalidate her why she's feeling so incredibly powerless and lost.